Well, hello there, Vlad here. Welcome to the studio. Today we're recording a song using just a guitar and a Boss Katana 100 Mark II. I've been familiar with the Boss Katana series for a while now. I've had the Katana 15 in my studio, the Mark I version that is, and now I have the Katana Mark II, the 100 watt version. And by the way, this video is sponsored by Boss, but as always, that doesn't buy my opinion and everything I say in this video are my true, honest opinions about things, sounds and so. One really cool thing about the Katana series and something that doesn't really get mentioned that much is the fact that it's a full-fledged guitar recording studio, which is kind of crazy for the price point. I think the Katana 50 is like 200 euros or so. The Mark 200 watt version is 300 euros. If that, that's kind of ridiculous because this setup that we're doing here is like just a guitar, Harley Benton, Dolem, Headless, something, something that I have here for a demo. And I'm going from the guitar into the Peterson Strobo HD tuner and from the tuner straight into the amp. And that's it. That's the recording rig. Obviously from the amp I'm also going via USB cable into my computer. And that's it. That's the whole recording rig and that's what we're going to use here today. To get the setup running you need to do a couple of things. First of all download the driver from the Boss website and also download the Boss Katana Studio app as well. And at this point I have to mention I had a little bit of trouble setting this up just because I didn't realize the different versions of the Katana Studio app for the Mark 1 versions and Mark 2 versions. So make sure you download the correct one that matches the app you have. Once I got all the correct drivers and apps installed, it was actually a fairly easy setup. What I love about the Katana Studio app is that you can control everything from the app and actually much more than you could do from the app itself. And during this process, I don't have to touch the amp a single time. The only thing I did was turn off the speaker on the amp itself, and that's it. Everything else will happen through the app over there. Before we dive into the Boss Tone Studio app, let's quickly check out what's going on in Logic. We go to audio preferences. First of all, when I plugged in the amp into the computer, it immediately shows up as an input here on my Logic system, which is really nice. Then. What you probably want to do is to reduce the input slash output buffer size. Basically, just to reduce the latency between what you're playing and what you're hearing through this setup. This usually helps a lot. Then, depending on your system, you also might want to enable software monitoring because that's basically how we're going to hear it. Same goes from the Katana, to Logic, and Logic then plays it to us. So that needs to be enabled. I also have a low latency mode enabled so it basically like disables some of the plugins over here and stuff like that and that way I'm getting a very very manageable latency almost to the point that after playing for a couple of minutes you don't notice it anymore and that's exactly how you want your latency you don't notice it anymore and you're just good to go the song we're recording today is like pop punkish things I was a teenager in late 90s early 2000s and bands like uh, Blink 182, Sum 41 those kinds of bands were a huge thing for me, playing Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, had some of those songs and stuff like that, so... Oh yeah, and all the old NHL games as well. And this type of music is really close to my heart and it was fun to finally write one of these type of songs. If we jump back to the Logic project over here, you can see that there's a bunch of tracks going on already. And I have basically recorded this song once already just to kind of work out all of the parts I want to have here and also because I asked my friend Billy to play bass on this track he's a way way better bass player than I am and he also has a YouTube channel by the way so be sure to check it out links below in the description and yeah did like a rough track for him sent him that he sent the bass tracks back to me and now we're here so let's start recording let's Take a quick listen on what's going on with the bass and drums first. Let's start from here because it's like just empty stuff before that. Yeah, so that kind of song. And Let's just dive into the... I was about to say let's dive into the rhythm guitars, but no! Let's do the kind of theme lead guitar thing at first, because we kind of need that for the intro. This part has been recorded once already, but we're going to do it again and add some effects and stuff. Jumping into the Katana Studio app. Let's 
go for some modern brown. I don't know. Oh, look, I have some little need of breeze that's saved here. Uh, let's increase the volume and watch it. So the lead part goes like this. I actually like that sound quite a lot already. Maybe some light delay or something. Yeah, that sounds good. And let's go to EQ. And I love the graphic EQ. Let's take out a lot of the low end because we don't need that. Really, it's a lead part. Just like that. And maybe some of the top and as well so like that boost the volume a bit yeah that's nice it's nice Maybe even down there a little bit yeah let's try and record it software monitoring on low latency mode on and let's make a loop over here and let's go let's see if the levels are even close to correct we'll find out soon There you go. I think we had some good parts in there. Uh, I'm gonna do that one more time just in case. Be right back. A few moments later. All right, we got our lead track now, and as you can see, I kind of chopped it up into pieces, or basically I found like a four bar section, which is well in time and kind of grooves with the drums and bass, and just copied it all the way around. There's no reason for me to like repeatedly go through the whole thing and try to nail the first 40 seconds of the song, just playing the same thing over and over again. I don't care if it's copy pasted. If you're offended by that, I'm sorry, but that's how I work sometimes. It's effective and you get the same result basically. So yeah, we got a lean line and what we're going to do next is do harmony for that, obviously, because guitar harmonies are beautiful. And the harmony only kicks in like in the last verses, so to speak. So it builds up, builds up, builds up. And like there's all these new things that are getting introduced like in the beginning there's just the lead guitar, then there's bass and drums, then guitars, rhythm guitars will kick in and stuff like that. So yeah, that's what we're doing. But let's record harmonies now and then I'll chop them up properly as well. Alright, you might have noticed right away that I wasn't doing the open D string thing with this one and the reason is like if there's two tracks which are both playing this anytime I hit the note like this it's just a bit too much it kind of jumps too much the open D thing so the harmony I'm just playing like the just the notes over there and I think it sounds better that way not too much of that open D string and more focus on the melody itself. Alright, there's this section I want to wrap. I think it was good. Let's copy paste it. Uh, actually, I don't know if there will be that guitar any place else than just like the 
last eight boss we go before we go into like heavy metalish thing and then there's kind of the same thing repeating here at the end as well so I'm sorry again somebody doesn't like this but I'm just gonna copy paste stuff I'm so funny I'm so incredibly funny there you go we got our lead guitars now all right rhythm guitars I don't hear anything because I need to go to rhythm guitar tracks and let's start with this one here you go unmute it enable it obviously we're on my lead sound right now so let's go to headless rhythm i have actually saved a preset for this one but for whatever reason it has reverb and delay on it which i don't need because it's a rhythm track it's pretty close but I need my booster. Less bottom end because it's a rhythm track and we have a bass guitar. And a little bit more. Surprisingly enough, this could use a little bit more drive. Nice! Let's get tracking! Alright, let's check out the sounds. I also need to put these way lower, maybe even mute the harmony because they're kind of getting in the way right now. So let's check out how it sounds. Right, the sounds a bit too muffled to maybe bring back the volume and also reduce the drive. It's a bit too much. So let's do it like that. Bring it like that and see. Yeah, definitely more definition already. Maybe bring down the volume even more and then, yeah, just check out. Yep, I could work with that. So yeah, let's try that again. I'm just going to skip this part. No reason for you to watch me do this 10 times. Three hours later. Oh yeah, we have our guitar tracks, or rhythm guitar tracks that is for most of the parts. Let's go to Gen to Gen to Breakdown thingy, which is basically like a riff thing going on over here. Let's go there. And we're still tracking rhythm guitar tracks, so. <laughs> We'll stick to the same sound for now and let's just try to record it and see what happens. So that's the riff. I think I want to do it again one or two times more. That's English, I think. Yeah. Skipping to the next part, but I'll be recording here now to just get it right. All right, the last thing I want to do is to add some sweetening parts, so to speak, like the way I want to have my songs, like there's always new elements being introduced, so it stays interesting. And here in the beginning, I kind of want to do some octave guitars, like very traditional. Let's go over here, this, unmute it. Let's take the solo, <laughs> something like Very, very traditional for pop punk type of stuff, but I mean, it just works for that style, so why not do that? <music> so 
See, that's a super nice little addition there. No wonder why pop gun pop pop <laughs> punk guys use it a lot. Uh, I might cut it from here somewhere and use it only at the end of this run, but I'll keep it there just in case. I'll track this again and then I'll double track it for the other side as well. And I'll be back once both are done. Three days later. One last thing I want to do here at the end is where have we have this riff. Where I have, we have, somebody has this riff. So for that, I want to, and something I've done already in the kind of test run of this song, I want to add some octave guitar there just to make it more heavy and thick. It doesn't have to be too distorted actually, just need to have an octave effect going on in there. So we'll go to modulation and look, we have octave here already. Yeah, I like that. That will make the whole part sound heavy. Yeah, let's start recording. Eventually. So there you have it. We have a song now. There's a bunch of tracks going on. I think it sounds good already. Obviously, a lot of mixing to do. I'd have to. EQ a little bit of that high end out from some of the rhythm tracks and maybe like do just, just basic EQ stuff you do when mixing. And I know you're dying to hear the finalized product, so let's just dive in. Here's the mix track. I'm not adding any tracks to this, I'm just mixing the things that you saw me record over here. And that's it. Let's go. Okay, I don't want to brag or anything, but that sounded pretty good. Like, uh, that's a less than 300 euro amp, but the Castana 50 has almost the same features and it's 200 something. That's just ridiculous. I wish I had something like this when I was starting out, just guitar playing or recording, that is. But yeah, it sounds good. It's easy to use. Once you get through the initial setup, it's kind of plug in and play or record and or record, something like that just works 
really really well very usable sounds i don't know if i would record a commercial album with these sounds but it's fantastic for demoing and stuff like that so yeah recording with katana 50 or 100 mark ii wow. thanks for watching this video if you have any questions about recording with katana series of amps leave the question down below in the comment section i'll try to answer as many as i can and all of the other guys who are familiar with recording with katana feel free to answer to those questions as well let's get this kind of help community thing rolling and help other people to get into recording with their amps because a lot of us have plenty of time at home right now i'm shooting this video during the whole corona thing and what better way to spend that time than creating your own music so yeah if you had any questions hit me up in the comment section down below and if you want to support what i do i got t-shirts mugs that kind of stuff available at my teespring store you can buy my jam tracks and if you want to see more content in the future hit the subscribe button and the notification bell as well thanks for watching this video i shall see you next time